people. This is Andy. Hi. And we are going to talk with our ALB1 Amazon workers that and they're going to tell us what's going on some of the things in the warehouse that they're experiencing. So I wanted to welcome Vanessa, I wanted to welcome Shy, and I wanted to welcome Heather. You just heard that Cheyenne and her girlfriend at Amazon broke up and everything that went down. Now you also dated an Amazon employee, correct? Correct. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your Amazon relationship and you know how long it went on and um, you know how long you dated before things started to unravel and then we'll go into that. And I want to start also by saying I am proud to be a friend of Vanessa. I personally received a photo on the morning of the incident that we'll talk about. And to see her now and to speak out on behalf of the men and women that are victims of domestic violence is extremely courageous. So I want to thank you and I give you so much credit for doing this. So you and your boyfriend were Amazon employees. So go ahead and tell us when you started, if you started together, how long you dated, and when, um, what happened with your breakup? Well, um, my partner and I had been together for two years or almost two years, I think, when I actually got him the job at Amazon. He had lost his job at Home Depot, and mm -hmm. he. I got him a job at Amazon. I actually applied before he did and got the job, but I said I was kind of like a little worried about my capability of working at Amazon, and so therefore he, he proceeded and started Amazon a month before I did, because he said, "Oh, it, you you can totally handle this. Come on over." So I came over to Amazon a month after he did. Yeah, he started um, a week after my first week at Amazon. I was assaulted and my jaw was broken, so I was immediately put on a leave. Of course, I was on a leave right off the get go. I come back. He's granted all these permissions and doing things and just the super picker and whatever. And I come back and I'm silent and. All these abuses happened to me while I was working there. I, I uh, experienced injuries so, that I came to AmCare for and was given care for that was never reported. So I, I do have a question. Now, you said a month into yours and his employment that he broke your jaw and you were out. Now, number yeah. one, I know that Amazon has a lot of support for victims of domestic violence. So how did they respond to what happened? Did you report it to them? At that time, I did not even report it that. I just was out because I was in an accident. Oh no. So, you know, which is- So I was just out because I was in an accident. So you were a victim of domestic violence. You were out. Um, but like many, many victims, you didn't report it and you come back and everything is, you know, probably fine with him because that's the cycle. So you come back and mm -hmm. things are good for a while or what happens next? Oh no, they were never good because this is where we go with warehouse romances and cheating on married people or partners. and. I do experience all of that. So he was cheating on you with other Amazon Andy. people? Mm. Well, showing interest in absolutely engaging in inappropriate online mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I recall, he tried to uh, message me at one point, but <laughs> we had, it. Well, it wasn't we had to teach him a little lesson. People. So, you know, like, so, and these were the things that like would initiate a lot of it because here I 
was like told to come to work here and then be subjected to like I don't so know. you know um wasn't all right so you you guys move forward um you're experiencing a lot of challenges you don't report it so now let's fast forward to january the morning that you sent me that photo and what happened so that was initially the last time that i was assaulted because i had had enough um i guess you mm -hmm. could say and i went on a leave and i put it under the domestic violence part of our mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. it was a specially protected mm -hmm. leave and i was unable to upload certain documents to their timeline mm -hmm. i had no access to a phone it was broken there was no way for me to upload i assumed that I could come back to work and just give them the paperwork. So, and that wasn't the case. So when I came back to work, my badge didn't work. Well, you were fired too, right? At one point. So we're talking about this stark contrast between what happened with Shai and what happened with you. So um, I want to kind of go through what happened. So in January, you were assaulted. You contacted me. You know, I advised you to go in and upload your medical documentation and the police report. You have additional protections under New York State law as a victim of domestic violence. Well, this is what so, I'm to, though. So, like, I had did everything that I thought I, I had to do. I, I, I went under and filed for domestic violence leave like i thought i was protected so you filed for it in your app now this is the amazon a to z app so you go into your app and you choose the leave of absence that's protected under domestic violence correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so if i remember correctly you selected that and had to get your paperwork but in the meantime and this is something that millions of Amazon workers across the world will say the three letters that gets 90% of people fired is UPT. So you go in, you apply for your leave, but they're still deducting UPT, correct? Oh, they took all of that. Right. Everything so, was gone. I couldn't even like they yeah, no, they were just like basically said I abandoned my job like that. I just decided Right. I didn't so work you end anymore. up getting So you end up getting terminated. Yeah, well they sent me a thanks. Well, I knew because when I went to go upload my documents when I was able to, that's when I noticed I couldn't get into my app. Mm -hmm. And I was confused because here I thought I was under a leave. I had no access to a phone. I didn't get emails. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. as, like if you're just experienced, like my phone was broken. I had no access to my app. So, so they, they were hospital. sending, you, so they were sending you alerts. I had the head injury. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I don't know. I just thought I was protected. So you're right. Which you I are. Yeah, so I really thought I was protected. Like I was he like really hurt. <laughs> but you you're ultimately pictures. terminated. So so yeah, I, I automatically I filed for an appeal, mm -hmm. which they say it could take what was it twenty four hours or I can't even remember now. It's been so long that it would take a certain amount of time for them for me to hear a response about my appeal. Now back when I applied for this appeal. I actually did apply for a panel appeal, right? Which was not offered to me because they didn't have that option at that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for whoever is in charge of the building to call me and give me an appeal, which never happened. So I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And finally I call ERC and I'm like, well, what's going on? And I'm like demanding because it's been like probably almost a week, not even almost. And then I get, oh, somebody's gonna call you tomorrow. And then that's when I get a call from Stuart. 
Mm -hmm. And I explained the situation. And in my appeal that I had filed through my email, I said I wanted my job reinstated in my back pay, which was two weeks. Mm -hmm. My job was reinstated, but my back pay was not. I do want to give you an opportunity to kind of just touch on, you know, how you feel about the fact that Shai, you know, was terminated. You were terminated. We were able to get you your job back, but the plot thickens because all of this happens. You get your job back. And we recently found out that the person who assaulted you just got his job back at Amazon. I didn't hear wow. all that because I got cut out. But yes, he did. So um, here we have Shy. Um, nothing happened on the property. She's terminated. We have Vanessa, who was hospitalized following that assault. Um, they both get fired for UPT. Vanessa gets her job back because she does have protections under the law and she's been there two years and we find out about a month and a half ago that he gets his job back at Amazon. So you can imagine how she feels, number one, as a victim of domestic violence. Now, granted, um, there wasn't um, an order of protection issued, but there was evidence of an assault. And it is very common for victims of domestic violence to be reluctant to speak out and also reluctant to, you know, especially report it to your employer because you don't want to be seen as a victim and it is embarrassing and it's very, very tough to speak out. So she did just that. She spoke out. She's been strong. She's got her own place. I've been there and I'm so proud of the milestones. So Vanessa, I just want you to share how you felt when you found out that he had gotten his job back and he was working in that building side by side us. Is she extreme not here? Anxiety. Oh, extreme I'm sorry. Anxiety. Extreme anxiety. She said extreme anxiety. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, to so have to see like, yeah, somebody that abused you in the face and you're at work where you like now. I don't know. And I know that you had spoken to um, loss prevention and I know you spoke to the managers and I know, you know, we have kind of rallied around you to make sure that you always feel safe. And, you know, at this point, I wanted to bring you guys on because I remember the look on your face and how you felt when you found out that he was coming back to Amazon. You know, there was there was documentation, medical documentation of the assault that had occurred. So how is it that we have these two strong women that both look at Amazon? I was treated Amazon for one of my assaults. Say Literally. that again? I didn't even go to the hospital. I was treated at Amcare for one of my assaults because I didn't have the time and I was I didn't go to the hospital and I went to work. Probably maybe I was like a cry for help and they didn't even like their man. I almost feel like they always say, you see something, say something. And Amcare is supposed to alert people of that. And I alerted and they knew that I worked with my partner and nothing was ever done about it. And so let me ask and was there a police report uh, on on the, the jaw or that. on? Look, that's in part. It's uh -huh. not, none of this ever ever happened at work. Although there, there was an incident once where he yelled at me in front of um, HR and called me all kinds of horrible names, which was overlooked because that's aggressive behavior, in my opinion. And if they were paying attention, they would have maybe seen a pattern or something. I don't know. So was there was a police but report, the from domestic violence. Vanessa? And then you're shy getting fired for something that didn't even happen on the property. Like, so let me get this straight. So, Vanessa, was there a police report for the January incident? There was, right? Oh yeah, I have a police report. He actually he lost his own job at Amazon 
because he had to spend a night in jail and didn't have the time. And he went negative for his UPT. It was like three hours in jail. Mind you. Yeah, he got arrested for that. So he was in jail for assaulting you. He loses his job because he was in jail for assaulting you. You're in the hospital. No, he didn't get arrested for assaulting me. That's the part. That's the funny part. He didn't even get arrested for assaulting me. He got arrested for one night when he was freaking out because I left and he he basically in the apartment and I wasn't even there. And I come home and my like the police had like raided my house because the neighbor upstairs called the police and he he huh? refused to open the door because they thought I was hurt and I wasn't even there. So it sounds like yeah, they the, he refused to open the door. So and they, yeah. he's trashing the place. So they they took him in, arrested mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. but. It wasn't necessarily for domestic violence that he was that there was a police report, like like you said. Um, no, I'm just that was from police. Amazon's. For, well, ahead. let me clarify. He spent the night in jail because of what happened with the apartment, but there was a police report for the assault. They were separate instances because she went to the hospital the night that there is a police report. So let me clarify. He spent the night in jail because he was trashing the apartment, right? But yeah, wasn't so he, there no, he didn't spend the night in jail for that. Yes, he did. And then, so he missed hours for that. And then the last time with all that shit with when he assaulted me, they weren't even arresting him because he assaulted me. And I have it all on video with Albany police too. So like, I have a lot of problems. <laughs> but he got arrested because he didn't show up for court for that, um, for not opening the door for police, which had nothing to do with me. So he- So was there, to... but there was, um, was there a 911 call for the assault? Oh yeah, absolutely, all of that. So was there a police report? And Amazon so got all um, of that and still reinstated him is what is what we're hearing here. Well, yeah, because it had nothing to do with Amazon. Was, even though he was on the be on the lookout list to not be on the property after all that when he was terminated and they knew what was going on and they still, oh, we have, we have no, we have no, um, whatever the word is for rehiring, it's all automated. So like he was able to come back in the system because he was able to come back in the system. Um, and they but, but did you, so at one point you did provide the medical documentation and the police report for the night that he arrived that you ended up going to the no, hospital. No, because that's not their business. They didn't ask for it. Well, for Why the domestic... I well, I mean, because when you went out and you went under domestic violence leave. Well, actually, yes, I did. I did actually upload the um, paperwork that showed that I was in the hospital. Uh huh. That was okay. all uploaded. Okay. Now, so you're so what you're saying. Uh, let me understand. Amazon does not have a way to potentially stop somebody from being approved through the HR system if they are currently under investigation for DV? Is that correct? Nope. Nope. Or or actually, when you are on a specially protected leave and you go negative in UPT or documentation, you're in an automatic, automat, automated thing where they just fire you. My, my um, warehouse, warehouse had no idea about anything. It was just a thing that the system did. And the Without thing with Shy, you know, is with, with with her phone being out, you know, that's literally their only way of being able to communicate with her that I would okay. think of, unless she had another way to log into her account. I'm guessing not. So that's a challenge, I'm and guessing, for the other side, like too. Mm -hmm. hmm. Crazy. So this is um so with regard to Vanessa and her 
termination. She did get her job back. But what happens is when somebody goes out on leave, you, first of all, you have to go into your app to request the leave. And when you go into your app, there are so many different types of leave, which is one thing they pride themselves on. But the flip side is that if you're not experienced in HR and you apply for the wrong leave or the wrong accommodation or the wrong, you know, there's so many different, then you get put on leave. You can't get into the building. You can't get into your app. And oftentimes, while they're waiting for documentation, the system is automatically deducting UPT. So the system is deducting UPT and if you ultimately terminating you. But if you're terminated, then you can't go into the app to upload the documentation necessary to get your UPT refunded. And this is something that happens quite often. So Again, you have the situation, somebody's a victim of domestic violence, it's very difficult, um, you know, to, to even talk about, let alone report. She does it under the domestic violence, um, it deducts your UPT, she gets fired, she can't upload the documents, so she ends up filing the appeal, she has to wait for a call, she does get her job back, but they never pay her the back pay that she's owed. And in the interim, a couple months goes by, the offender applies at Amazon, which why would you do that? Knowing that you have broken this girl's jaw, you have given her black eye, sent her to the hospital. It's been a clear case of domestic violence. So I don't even know what would possess somebody who knows that they have assaulted this girl in, you know, at Amazon or any other employer for that matter, what would possess you to apply for a job there? Um, but ultimately he does get his job back. Matter of fact, shortly after he started, he like walked by me and then kind of started to approach me. And I just said, don't even think about it and just kept walking. Um, and I, I believe that's the sentiment among anybody that knows Vanessa or knew him. You know, it's something that we've known about. But the flip side is she uploaded her medical documentation. So on one hand, they're asking for an order of protection. So they're claiming that they want or need an order of protection in order to, um, you know, void his employment. And in other words, they're saying, if you don't want them working here, you have to get an order of protection. The medical documentation isn't sufficient. The, you know, the police report isn't sufficient. We want an order of protection. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation tonight because here you have a victim of domestic violence and anybody that has been a victim of domestic violence knows it typically takes an average of six to seven times for a woman to ultimately leave. That's not something that's foreign. So, you know, when I hear, oh, they should have come forward sooner, and that's something that I did hear in the building when it came to Vanessa, and I was very adamant that if we're going to advocate for victims of domestic violence and we're going to apply the law correctly, we need to know statistically that a woman is reluctant to come forward, especially when it comes to her employer, and we need to protect her. So we have this, yep. you know, Vanessa, and then... Especially when your employer works with you. Right. So, you know, he's got his job back. So then we have Shy, no physical contact, no threats of violence, no harassment, simply wanted her money back. Nothing yeah. happened on the property and she's fired. So how do you have these two situations? And the central investigation of Amazon and, you know, I believe... If we look in the media, we've had so many Amazon workers, if, uh, stabbings and shootings and an increase in violence. And, you know, we have to kind of bear in mind that we need to be consistent in how we're applying the policies. We need to protect victims of domestic violence. And, you know, we can't take somebody like Shy and say, oh, you wanted your money back while you're fired versus Vanessa, who was clearly a victim and he gets his job back. So how do we move forward? So Vanessa, what 
if you were to say, what can Amazon do for you to make it better? What could they have done better for you? And I think that Shai should get her job back in this situation. So Vanessa, in this situation, what could what could ALB one and what could Amazon do to support you, to advocate for you, and what could they have done differently to make you feel safe when going back to work as a victim of domestic violence? Well, first I'm gonna say Shai should absolutely have her job back because none of this applies like she should still be working um i'm not too sure what i can answer about my situation what amazon could have did better um what could i have done better i don't know i didn't know i just hope that maybe from my experience that people won't be automatically fired in the system that mm -hmm. a, a specially protected leave should be like a red flag Mm -hmm. um so that people don't have to go through an appeal process and lose money even more money because they've already been out of work already experiencing financial hardship most likely and i don't know like i really don't have the proper answer answer for that actually you know what vanessa that was an excellent answer because you know what first of all there is nothing that you should have done differently i am so proud of you and i truly mean that i'll never forget that yeah. photo that morning and i will always mm. remember how strong you were to come back from that you could have easily went back i know how hard it was for you but in conclusion Vanessa, I'm very proud of you, but your answer is excellent because you're absolutely right. I do believe that um, we do need to fight for a way that Amazon does not automatically deduct the UPT, automatically firing people that have a protected absence, are on a protected leave. So that was- Let me just say this on a side note real quick, and automatically deducting UPT. Now I have an accommodation where I have an extra 40 hours of UPT every month. Why do I have to go to HR every time and be like, can you reimburse me? It should be an automatic thing. Mm -hmm. I have an accommodation. Just like if I have a permanent accommodation, it should be there. They should all know about it. Yeah. Where's management? Like that, that, question mark. that was going to be my question in all of this. Like, it seems that there is an absent, an absence of management being involved with any of this between you guys and, and the app. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's done by design. <laughs> it's all done by this mm. we have i can't i wish i could show you my pyramid because i started out in pick i've had so many managers i can't even freaking name all of them they don't know me and i don't know them the manager like, turnover is done on purpose. you know the manager turnover is just as high as the associates it's just not recognized because it's a smaller scale but it, it is true. And the thing is, you know, most of our managers are literally college grads with no warehouse experience, no experience in the world. And I, I try to help them develop because they're young and it's not their fault that they were thrust into this culture. And I do think that there are managers that are building that do try, but I think there's a majority that are inexperienced and don't know how to handle these situations. And I don't think it's the fault of not just the managers or LP or, well, some HR, but I do believe that Amazon strategically segregates workers, departments, managers, and, you know, like, Whoever heard of LP handling domestic violence? Isn't that traditionally an HR? And how does HR? Yeah. Right. And how does HR? Yeah. Well, even even LP even LP with listen with my I have um I have implants because I had hip surgery, so I have steel rods in both of my femurs and hip replacements. So I make 
secondary screening go off. And I apparently did it too many times for their liking. So I was getting called in to see loss prevention and I'm like scared as shit. And I'm like, what did I do? Uh. And there's HR and, and I'm like, well, they're like, oh, well, you know, you keep making secondary screening go off. And, and I'm like, well, listen, I have, this is my, like, this is my medical condition. Well, you need to get medical clearance from your doctor stating that you have this in your body. Okay. <laughs> so I have a special right. staff show it. Uh, I'm sure your doctor would be I'm happy like, to write that up and tell them that. My personal medical what was that? I said, I'm sure your doctor would be happy to write that. But yeah, it's really none of their business. I mean, uh, uh, no, exactly. they made her go to the doctor and get a badge. Well, I was going to get written up and I could be terminated. If she did it. Richard told me this. Richard is no longer with us. Yes. She has a badge that I. Did Richard get promoted? She has a badge that identifies where the steel rods are in her body. So she otherwise she would have gotten terminated for making this the security alarms go off with her legs. I don't mean to laugh, but this is how crazy. I also told him I said, well, you know what? I have metal plates in my jaw too. Do you need a fucking circle? Oh. I'm sorry, my mouth around my jaw. No, 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 that's okay. We, 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 we're uncensored here. They're fine. Um, we've got Sarah <laughs> Sarah like, Chowdery please. over over on over on Rumble. Wait, sorry, Sarah's Sarah, here. Sa Sa Sarah's over on the Rumble uh, watching us, and she says, hi, Cheyenne Nessa, and she says, I've had six manager changes in a year and a half. Oh, Sarah's my girl. Sarah's yeah, actually no. going to labor. Sarah's going to labor notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sarah's going Sarah. to labor notes. I know. Very cool. I know. I love her. She's my mini me at work. <laughs> I'm I'm so proud of my she girl there. You know, it's women history she's month. Take over here with them. <laughs> she is. Thanks for watching, I and Sarah.